So here I am in Nashville, and I'm visiting my sister, and I'm, while I'm here, I'm going to try to soak in as much of the musical scene as I can. For one thing, I want to figure out what this whole country music thing is, finally. When I was in college, it was always cool to hate on country for some reason. I never quite figured out why. Every time I brought it up with my classmates, they'd always tell me something along the lines of, it all sounds the same. It sounds like a bunch of guys singing in fake southern accents about how their truck broke down and their dog died. It kind of stretches the bounds of imagination that you could build a multi-billion dollar music industry off of trucks breaking down and dogs dying. But I've never owned a truck and I've never owned a dog, so what do I know? Behold, the Grand Ole Opry House, home of only the most famous, longest-running live country music broadcast on planet Earth. We were here on Friday night for what turned out to be a surprisingly fun concert. It started out with some old-time bluegrass-type music, and then they moved on to more mainstream, contemporary country music. They had eight segments with a different featured singer or pair of singers singing two or three songs each. As far as what they sang about, there really wasn't anything about trucks breaking down or dogs dying. A lot of it tended to be about love and heartbreak, which, face it, is what a lot of the best songs are about in any genre. And as for the southern accents, honestly, I haven't spent enough time south of the Mason-Dixon line to tell a fake southern accent from a real one. They sounded okay to me. The following morning, we went back for the backstage tour of the Grand Ole Opry. We're allowed to take pics backstage, just not video. But we got to see the place where the house band rehearses and their main studio for filming when they aren't doing live broadcasts, and all the dressing rooms that are done up in different ways. Apparently all the big country stars have their favorite rooms each. And then they took us out on the stage, so I can honestly say I've been on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, never mind that I haven't actually performed anything there. I did think about reaching out and playing a few notes on the piano, but figured they might throw me out. Then there's the Roy Acuff house. He was apparently one of the biggest names in country, and during the last few years of his life, he lived in this little house in the shadow of the new Grand Ole Opry Hall. And after his death, they turned it into a museum, which is kind of odd for someone not already a country music fan. The exhibit is mostly costumes and other belongings of various singers. I mean, I guess if there was an exhibit that said Ludwig von Beethoven blew his nose on this handkerchief, I could be interested in that. So it's the same sort of thing here. The goofiest part for me was the wall where they had one particular singer's entire Beanie Baby collection. Which makes me wonder, if I become famous, would they put my Lego collection in a museum? I wonder. So why do they call it the Grand Ole Opry? Well, supposedly back in the old days, they used to broadcast immediately following a classical music radio program. And one day the announcer decided to make a joke about the very abrupt shift in musical styles. So he said, You've just been listening to Grand Opera, but now you're going to hear Grand Ole Opry. The idea being, I guess, that this is opera for country bumpkins. Anyway, here we are at Ryman Auditorium. This is the original, or not the original, the previous home of the Grand Ole Opry and the venue that's most associated with it. This is, I guess, like a Carnegie Hall for a country or maybe Vienna's Musikverein. Um, the Grand Ole Opry outgrew it a few decades back, so they built the new hall that's maybe 20 minutes out of town. But this venue is still used for all kinds of things, not just country music. Unfortunately, there really wasn't any way to go backstage at Ryman, but we did get to wander around the auditorium, which was really beautiful. It was originally built by Thomas Ryman as a house of worship under the name Union Gospel Tabernacle. And after his death, it was rededicated as Ryman Auditorium and increasingly used for entertainment purposes. And now for something very much not country music, we're going to hear the Nashville Symphony at Skirmerhorn Center. I may have actually said that wrong. I heard someone say Skirmerhorn Center. But however you pronounce it, that was a great concert. They did an early work by the Polish composer Witold Lutuswawski, who's not someone I know at all. 
that piece was pretty vivid and imaginative. And then they did Dvorak's cello concerto with Johannes Moser as the soloist. I don't know why the silver sneakers. Followed by the Brahms Fourth, both of which pieces I'd only ever heard on recordings, so it was great to hear them live. One of my sister's friends recommended the Old Town Trolley Tour, so I hopped on board and they gave us quite a nice survey of the sights and sounds of Nashville. This here is Legislative Plaza, and this building here in front of the skyscraper is War Memorial Auditorium, the fourth home of the Grand Ole Opry right before Ryman Auditorium, which was the fifth. Then over here you have the Tennessee State Capitol, which according to Wikipedia is one of 12 state capitals without a dome. Just for comparison, here's a picture of the Rhode Island State Capitol that I found off the internet somewhere. I like ours better. Unfortunately, I didn't get pictures of all of the tour because both of my cameras were running a bit low on battery. But I did take note, for example, that both ASCAP and BMI have offices in Nashville. There's this one whole stretch of town called Music Row where there are a whole bunch of studios, big and small. Some of them are private homes that have been turned into studios. For example, there's this one famous country singer named Garth Brooks. That's Garth, not Darth, by the way. And this is apparently his personal studio. And then you have this statue of naked dancers, which apparently scandalized the Tennesseans when it was first put up. But nowadays, I guess people hardly bat an eyelash at it. So we're headed back to Ryman to hear Regina Spector file this under not country music again. Uh, I don't even know how you would categorize her. She's something like alt folk rock with some classical influences. And she was one of the few non-classical artists I really got into in college. She actually came through Providence maybe a decade ago, and I missed that concert for some stupid reason. So. I'm excited to hear her live, finally, after all these years. Alas, my crappy old camera was not quite enough to properly capture the occasion, but it was a delightful concert every moment of it. Nashville apparently likes to pride itself on being the so-called Athens of the American South, I guess because of its being a cultural and or educational center. And by way of driving the point home, they've got this whole full-size replica of the Athenian Parthenon right in the middle of Centennial Park. I mean, I don't know if this is going overboard, but I'm so glad this thing exists. Inside the Parthenon, it's like this mini art museum. There's some paintings that were originally, I guess, this one guy's private collection. And then there are a whole bunch of photographs that show the early construction of the Parthenon. And then you go upstairs, and in the main temple, you have this giant statue of Athena. And going in there, I really felt like I ought to be performing some sort of Greco-Roman pagan ritual, like bring a goat to sacrifice and ask Athena to bestow some wisdom upon me. I don't know what's with that face in between her breasts. That just really freaks me out. All in all, it's been a pretty enjoyable visit so far. I still don't exactly know what country music is, but I enjoyed listening to it and I'd probably listen to more of it. But I'll probably still spend more time listening to classical music. Or Regina Spector, for that matter. I'm going to be here for one more day. We're talking about visiting President Andrew Jackson's estate, and then I'll be flying back to Rhode Island. So see you all soon.